Thank, thank you, Senator Beck. Sen Senator Ryan. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, at the end, I'd like to ask some questions about breaking news about live exports to Qatar and Pakistan. But I'll just start with the, situ the recent situation in Bahrain. Considering what happened with sheep, the sheep shipment to Bahrain and then the killing of about 7,000 of these sheep in Pakistan under, under unacceptable conditions that broke the SCAS standards, are you confident the producers are able to know what happens at all stages of the supply chain? Uh, Philip Guy, Deputy Secretary. Um, Senator, we approved a, a supply chain to Pakistan, and as you're aware, uh, the supply chain, uh, the, the operator of the supply chain wasn't able to maintain control of those animals through the intervention of local authorities and um, armed guards. Uh, at the time of approval of the supply chain, we were confident in that it met the SCAS standards. So considering Wellard, and you've just confirmed it, said that it lost control of the supply chain when the sheep arrived in Pakistan, is it accurate to say the producers now have visibility along the supply chain? Um, what was approved was the supply chain that enabled uh, the three elements we look for in SCAS, which is control, traceability and uh, treatment to international animal welfare standards. And they had, at the time of approval, that supply chain had all those elements. Uh, the intervention of uh, third parties here um, has meant that the exporter did lose control. We're currently conducting an investigation into the circumstances of that loss of control and what, what led to it, and, um, and we'll be reporting it on, that, on that in due course. So, considering you say lost control, that means that you... That, um, to say that the supply chain, with the supply chain, you can identify breaches, mistakes, and deal with that through the regulator, that at some point that that was not able to be achieved, once because well I'd lost control. That's correct. And so what we had is a very regrettable situation in which 21,000 sheep ended up being culled. That wasn't the intent of uh, certainly of the exporter or of indeed of the regulator. <coughs> so when. Uh, Minister Ludwig said, the system of regulation works because what we can do with the supply chain, we can identify breaches, we can identify mistakes, <coughs> and deal with that through the regulator. That's actually not, that didn't actually happen, did it? No, I think we'll, it has. And what, what we're trying to do is consignment by consignment, supply chain by supply chain, we approve them to have the elements of control, traceability and, and treatment to international animal welfare standards. This case, that didn't occur, so we now go back, we look at it, we examine, we investigate fully, we understand the re try to understand the reasons for those, for any, any breaches in that system, and then make judgments and changes accordingly. Um, I think the, the bigger picture here, um, Senator Rannan, is that there has been the movement of quite a lot, large number of, of animals, uh, probably over 1.3 million animals since the 1st of January this year through SCAS compliant supply chains. Here's an example where it hasn't worked, where there has been adverse outcomes that uh, we, we, we regret, uh, and we're now going to try and do our best to learn from that to improve the, the overall regulatory system. Just going back to uh, your comment that you're looking, reporting on it at the moment, uh, investigating it, when will the report be finalised and when will it be made public? Um, I can't say when it will be finalised. We're in the process of gathering information, uh, going through the, uh, asking the exporter to provide all relevant information to us. I wrote to the exporter on Monday of this week to start to start that process. The exporter, we met with the exporter yesterday. We'll be seeking information from other parties as well. These matters are handled by our uh, compliance and enforcement unit, and they they do do it to their their timeline. This well, year or next year. I, I can't say, Senator. Is there well, anybody say, from, the, from them here who could give us an idea? Sen Senator, they wouldn't be able to give you a timeline at the moment. They would, they, the, the, this is in a preliminary stage. Okay. Uh, we've only just, as uh, Mr Lyons said, um, worked through the preliminaries with the exporter. Uh, there will be a lot of information to gather, and okay. obviously it will be a uh, relatively complex investigation. Made, I, made public? Yes, I can Thank assure you. you, Senator, that one thing I can say is that the, the report will be made public as indeed we do with all of our investigations. Thank you. Do you think the events in Bahrain and Pakistan could have been prevented? Um, 
Senator, the, that's really a question that we'll be in a better position to answer when we've uh, completed our investigation um, in relation to the incidents in Pakistan and our review of the circumstances in Bahrain. So I'd just like to go back to the Bahrain and how that all played out. <coughs> and I'll just put, um, when, um, just put a few questions together here. Yep. When did DAF become aware that there was a problem with unloading in Bahrain? What action did you take when you became aware? And what, what you negotiated at that point? Yep. And did DAF remind Bahrain of its obligations under the MOU, which I understand sets out that animals are to be unloaded within 36 hours of docking? Right. Thanks, Senator. Um, we were advised on the evening of the 22nd of August that uh, a consignment uh, was not given permission uh, to unload in Bahrain due to some concerns about the health of the sheep. Who, who informed you, please? Uh, the exporter. Um, that vessel had already discharged sheep in Qatar and Oman, so that was uh, a surprise to us. Um, at, we then... Um, the, the concern that had been raised by the Bahraini government was in relation to uh, a small number of animals with a common virus called scabby mouth. Um, that's not a, a disease of concern as far as um, the memorandum understanding we have between Australia and Bahrain. We immediately uh, started representations through the post, um, in, through our post in Bahrain, um, to uh, remind Bahrain of their obligation under the MOU where uh, that does indeed um, relate to getting uh, unloading healthy animals. There was a continued to be a series of uh, interactions uh, between government officials uh, and the Bahraini officials to uh, try and ascertain what the, the circumstances were, tests were taken, etc., etc. Clarify, government officials, which government officials and Bahraini officials? These were our representatives um, in Bahrain. And further, just to, with the indulgence of Senator Rihanna, you said earlier, I think I heard you say that the concerns about unloading the sheep were raised by the exporter? No, no, we were informed by the exporter oh. of the, that they had a trouble in unloading, Senator. And, and who raised the concern of the, of the disease in the sheep? Uh, the Bahraini government officials. So in your, the report you're going to do, are you going to look at the difficulty and the degree of difficulty of doing business in those areas with a different sort of a culture in terms of facilitation money? I, I mean, Sen Senator, uh, being um, familiar with the way it works, if you, you can get a signature on anything if you're paying enough money in a lot of these places. Senator, the issue for us in this case um, was that there was uh, the exporter uh, let us know that they were having trouble unloading uh, the vessel uh, on the grounds that ap appeared to be uh, veterinary uh, health grounds. At no stage did the veterinary authorities actually reject the consignment on animal health grounds, and it was in fact uh, the Port Authority which asked the vessel to move off, uh, and uh, the reason for that was not known to us. So what we deal with is the facts as we know them, and the facts as we know them are uh, that the, um, uh, the exporter uh, had difficulty unloading. The ostensible reason was uh, uh, the health of the animals. That said, the veterinary authorities in Bahrain did not reject the uh, animals. Who, who gave how many, the... Sorry, how many uh, days after the 22nd of August did the shipment leave? It, it, it moved outside... Um, Right, what, what, did it leave the government outside leave the port? Does it, um, when leave does Bahrain it... altogether? 30th, 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 30th of August. Yeah. 30th, 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 30th August, yeah. And when you said that, that Wellards were informed, were, who, who, how did that Wellards find out? Because there are some reports that you found out, or they found out, from a media report, and they were not notified officially. Were Wellards notified officially? And if so, what does official mean? The, 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 um, the exact circumstances are, are one of the things we will be investigating, but as I say, there was, there was no rejection from, of the consignment from uh, the veterinary authorities. Uh, rather, yeah. there was simply not, at that stage, the agreement to unload, so there was still activity going on. 
The, the, the proximate issue was that then the Port Authority asked the ship to move off berth, and their ship moved off berth uh, out, uh, outside of the um, uh, waters, and uh, in due course, the um, exporter made the decision to uh, go to an alternative port. Uh, why were the RSPCA and Animals Australia not officially notified of problems with the two shipments heading to Bahrain and Kuwait, considering the RSPCA is represented on the review of the animal standards for the export of livestock? It, it's not our role as a regulator to inform third parties of the progress of these issues. What, um, is that your interpretation or um, no, of what the rules are? It's not the rules. It's not, it's not a requirement for us to inform third parties of the state of any particular consignment. We, we have a lot of consignments. We don't give running commentaries, if you like. But considering the controversy around this, wouldn't it have been advisable <coughs> to uh, alert the Australian Standards for the Export of Livestock um, members know? Um, uh, there's no particular role for that uh, for anybody involved in that process on any particular okay. consignment. Did the department know of any disease problems in the feedlots of Western Australia prior to the sheep being exported to Bahrain? Um, um, Senator, the uh, animals were, as uh, Dr. Ship has uh, outlined already, were passed as healthy uh, and fit to load. And so we weren't aware of any, any problems and subsequent testing of those animals indicates they did not have any health problems. So they were what? independently tested by a laboratory in um, the UK and those tests came clear of all notifiable diseases. Thank you. What steps took place between the two shipments being rejected by Bahrain and the exporters being able to send the sheep to Pakistan by getting Pakistan approved under SCAS? Um, and, and also, could you give us a timeline here? Because we're now up to the 30th of August. So you've now decided the shipment leaves <coughs> Bahrain. Uh, at, at what point do you start negotiating with Pakistan? How do you get them into SCAS? When do they arrive? So timeline and how it worked, please. Okay. Uh, first of all, Senator, the decision to um, go to Pakistan is not a decision taken by the government. That decision was taken by the exporter. Um, in light of the difficulties that the exporter was having in being able to unload the sheep, we received from the exporter on the 24th of August uh, some uh, information that they might be considering using uh, Pakistan. In order to, uh, to what do- What day was that, please? That was the 24th of August. Um, in order for that shipment to, to go to Pakistan legally, there were two broad requirements. The first was to uh, animal health certification, uh, to, to, to make sure that those sheep were able to be landed in Pakistan, that they met Pakistan's health requirements. And the second thing was to get an approval under SCAS, uh, that there was a SCAS compliant supply chain in Pakistan. So how do you get SCAS in place so quickly, considering from what I understood with other countries, it's actually a considerable process? Yeah, I think it's important to understand what we're looking at for SCAS. It's not necessarily a matter of time. It's whether, whether or not a supply chain meets the standards required to give assurance to the, to the regulator that the animals will be uh, under control, traceable and uh, treated to international animal welfare standards. So what we require, we have a, a checklist that we go through to make sure that the supply chain is compliant with SCAS. Over the period of the 20, between the 24th of August and when SCAS approval was granted on the 1st of September, the exporter was able to provide the necessary information to enable us to approve the shipment as under SCAS. So even though um Pakistan has no record importing sheep from Australia since 1996. So therefore there hasn't been a relationship. I'm therefore assuming that DAF doesn't have knowledge about how that industry is working, that you were able to sign off yep. on what Wellard supplies to you. Yes. So on what, on what basis are you confident that Wellards are accurate in terms of what they set out will happen to the animals when they arrive? 
quite correct in pointing out that this is, this is the first shipment into Pakistan, so it's a new market and therefore SCAS is required. Um, of, of slaughter sheep, but, but yeah. not true for the Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, Mr. Dr. Ship's reminding me that this is for slaughter animals, for slaughter yes. sheep. Um, so, uh, as I said before, um, what we're, the responsibilities on the exporter under the SCAS system to be able to demonstrate to the, to, to the regulator that they have a supply chain that meets the requirements of SCAS. They're able to do that. We were aware prior to this that uh, Wellards had been planning um, to uh, open up the market into Pakistan for slaughter sheep. So, there, so but still, to, uh, to go back to my question, there hasn't been a trade since 1996 in sheep with Pakistan. No. So you've just trusted Wellards when they've said the SCAS will work. No. So that's what you signed off on? No. 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 What we've signed off on <coughs> is a checklist which is on our website about all of the requirements we need to, that a, a, an SCAS compliant supply chain has to meet. What Wellard's responsibility or any exporter's responsibility is to demonstrate that, that those elements are met. When those elements are met, the regulator makes that decision. So, Senator, and it's probably worth saying that in this case, um, additional uh, measures were included in the uh, submission, including the presence of an independent monitoring officer with uh, proper animal welfare expertise, independence, no conflict of interest, the presence of an MLA personnel, Mid Livestock Australia personnel, to monitor standards and deliver assistance, and the presence of additional technical staff to look at livestock logistics, transport, handling, training, etc. So there was a, a range of additional uh, measures over and above the norm, which was really, I think, a recognition that uh, this was a new um, uh, uh, supply chain. So you were uh, confident that there were trained staff and proper <coughs> facilities yep. for the sheep's slaughter? Yeah, oh, oh thank problem. you. Um, could I just yes, ask about problem, Our Mr. problem was, sorry, I was just going to say that our problem was not within the, the problem that occurred was not within the supply chain that was approved, but was um, the fact that there was a third party who entered and took control. So it wasn't a yeah. okay. um, Mr. Could, Chair, we actually didn't start the questions sorry. until 25-2, and we had allocated half an hour. And so Senator Rannan, you minutes. know, I know what time we started. That's why I've gone yeah. over. I Thank don't you. need to be lectured. We were no, I thought a lecture was just a suggestion. About three minutes over, and I've told uh, you, I've asked you to take the, uh, make that your last question. I'll ask you to put the rest on notice to make this one's answered. Thank you. Yeah. Senator, just to add in terms of the relationships uh, with Pakistan over the, the period, from 2007 to date, there's been 26 uh, consignments of breeder cattle, goat, sheep, et cetera, from a variety of um, different exporters. Um, I'm advised that Wellards started their preparation for SCAS, being SCAS compliant in June of this year. And indeed, the relationship that Wellards have with the importer dates back to 1992. And they've been working with that importer since 1996 in terms of getting a facility that would be uh, compliant to international standards, and they've been working since, obviously, since June in getting this up to speed, which is what, as I mentioned earlier on, Wellards had informed us uh, prior to this incident occurring. Thank you. Now, and if, 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 if,